an example, 3x minus 4y is equal to 1, and 2x plus 5y is equal to 6. Let's say that I gave you these two equations. Using substitution here would, would lead to a very messy problem with fractional coefficients that, that would, you know, just give you a headache that you don't need. But if you're patient, you should be able to figure out what you need to multiply these equations in order, in order to cancel one of the variables. So here's what you do. First, you look for a situation like this one. Once you realize, by the way, that none of the coefficients cancel, then neither of the variables will cancel if you just add the equations the way they're given to you. Now, your thinking process goes something like this. Is there an easy fix? In other words, can I multiply one of the equations by something that will enable me to cancel one of the variables? So let's see. What is the opposite of three? Negative three. Is there an easy way to multiply two by something to change it into a negative three? No. That all right, what's the opposite of, pick the bigger one here, 5 for instance, what's the opposite of 5? Negative. negative 5. Could you multiply 4 times something to change it into a negative 5? Not a fraction, but we don't want fractions. So this is not one of the easy problems. This is, the hard, this is as hard as they come. When it comes to the addition method, this is it. This is the hardest type of problem. Now, what you're going to think about, I'd like you to think about common multiples. Or imagine, you know, if, if you were thinking of fractions, how you find common denominators, that type of idea. I usually, right, once I realize I have one of these challenging problems, I direct my attention to the, the, the smaller numbers. That's just me. It doesn't matter which variable you cancel. You just need to decide, I'm going to cancel the x's or I'm going to cancel the y's. Let's say that I decide I want to cancel the x's. i got to ask myself, what can these two numbers go into? Six. They both go into 6. Then my job is to change one of them into a positive 6, the other one into a negative, negative 6. That's the hint. Let's see if you can do that now. I'm going to let you decide how. What are you going to multiply? Don't say, it, don't say it out loud. I want you to think it through for a little bit. Ask yourself, how do I make, what do I multiply the top equation to get the number 6 here? And what do I need to do to the bottom equation to get this to be a negative 6? And then keep going from there. Don't say the answer. Um, and then in a moment we're going to see what if we wanted to cancel the y's instead. Why? Question. Because that's what changes this into a? 6. We didn't even care what these numbers were. We can, once you decide you want to cancel x, all you have to worry is about these two numbers. All right, so let's see what we get for but this what equation. what if you did the top, the opposite? That's fine. You can do negative 2 right here. And the bottom 2. That's right. No, not 2. This one would be by what? 3. By 3. Well, we'll see in just a second. Let's just say here, what equation do, do we get? 6x. Two, 2 times 3x is 6x. Uh, Minus 8y. Minus 8y. Minus 8y. Minus 2. Any questions with that step? Make sure you ask me if, if you're not quite clear. Now, the second, we need the opposite of this number to cancel the axis. We need negative 6 right here. So that means we must multiply the bottom by negative, negative 3. Very nice. And if you do it on the left side of the equation, you're going to have to multiply the right side. So that Okay, so let's see what let's see what the uh, what the new equation looks like. This would be negative three times two is negative six x. Negative three times five. And negative three times six. And now you have two equations that are equivalent to the original equations, but they have one advantage: that now the x's will cancel each other when you add. And you made it happen by selecting these two numbers. So the question you were asking, Talina, a second ago was, what if you multiply here by negative 2? This would be a negative 6. We would need this one then to be a positive 6. So you multiply by a positive 3 right here. The point is, this has to be opposite, so they cancel. All right, let's, let's finish this now. Negative 8 and negative 15. Now, this is something that... Um, 
that's going to happen when you know when you're solving systems of equations. The first few examples we did had uh, solutions that were whole numbers, integers. Now uh, we're going to have fractions, and that's okay. Two minus eighteen. Just reduce them to lowest terms. You divide by negative twenty-three both sides of the equation. Y equals 16 over 23. What happened to the negative signs? They cancel each other. Now, I hope I won't confuse you after this year, but I'm going to show you an alternative to, to doing what we've been doing up to now. What we would have to do right now, right, is take the number 16 20 thirds, which I would guess is in no one's list of favorite numbers ever. 16 20 thirds is just not you know, a very nice number. That you would have to plug it in here now to be able to solve for y. You can do that if you like, but I'm going to show you a, a different approach that you may decide it's, it's worthwhile. Did you find this difficult, this process of getting to this point? All right. You can do this same process one more time with the original equations, but this time, ask yourself, I want to cancel the y's. How can I make that happen? So once you have an answer like this, if, if it's an ugly fraction, and you don't want to plug it in because you know you might mess up when you're evaluating with the fraction, take the original problem again and ask yourself, what do I multiply? What, what do both of these numbers go into? What can I change them into? They both can go into 20. Does that make sense to you? If I change this into a negative 20, since this one's negative already, and this into a positive 20, they would cancel out. Can you make that happen? We have decided to cancel the y's now. Instead of the x's, we're going to cancel the y's. Figure out how do you make this number into a negative 20 and this one into a positive 20, and then uh, and then so for y. Oh, it has a minus. I should have used here. Let's see what happens when we multiply the top equation by 5. 5 times 3? 15x. 5 times negative 4? Negative 20y. 20y equals 5 times 1 is 5. Now, the bottom, we decided not to use negative 4 because we already have a negative 20 here. I need this to be a positive 20, so I'm going to multiply by positive 4, all sides of this equation. So I'll distribute the 4 here, and here, and then multiply by 4, this side of the equation as well. 4 times 2x? 4 times 5? Positive 20y. And 4 times 6? 24. See that? And then you add your two equations. Now, what is 15x plus 8x? 23x. 23x. 20y minus 20y? Okay. They cancel. Not by chance, you made it happen when you made this selection right here. And here is? 29. Look how easy. We didn't have any fractions to multiply by. We didn't have any fractions to plug in. All I need to do is divide both sides by 23, and I end up with my answer. X equals what? 29, 20 thirds. So, what's our solution? Our solution is a point 29, to, this is not a negative sign. 29, 20 thirds, comma, 16, 20 thirds. Now, if you don't like this idea of having to do some, uh, the, the addition method twice, once you have one solution, you can take that fraction, plug it in here, I'm sorry, in here or here, and then solve for x. But if you don't want to do that, you can go back to the original problem and cancel the other variable. So, Talina, you were asking me, should we have done, uh, gotten rid of the y first? If you had, that would be great, but now you have x equals 29, 20 thirds. How do we find y? Well, we either plug it in, which I didn't want to do, or I go and do this. When I cancel the x's, I'm going to be able to solve for y. 
when we cancel the y's, we were able to solve for x. 